Hey everybody, welcome to week four of our Trustworthy Online Bible Study. I know I'm learning a lot and I love having y'all join me on the couch where I can learn more from you. This week we have, Lisa, you said it's your favorite king. Do you want to say who it is? Well, favorite I, would, I wouldn't say it's my him. favorite king. <laughs> You're right. Who am I to put those words <laughs> in your mouth? I'm back it up. <laughs> no, I, I would just say, I think this lesson that I learned from, it was such an unexpected yeah. lesson, but um, yeah, it's definitely one of those that has continued to sit with me. Okay, and it is of King Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, sometimes uh, we have staff meeting every other week or so mm -hmm. at Proverbs 31, and you give the devotion frequently, mm -hmm. which is wonderful, and you gave a story about Hezekiah, and you shared what you learned from him to our staff. I thought it was so insightful, and I'm excited for you to share with those watching. Thank you, yes. So Hezekiah, first of all, where we filmed this lesson that mm -hmm. you'll see this week is really profound, because one thing that Hezekiah is still known for to this day, if you go to Israel, you can actually visit Hezekiah's tunnel. And Hezekiah's tunnel was, at the time, a very innovative uh, military strategy, really, that helped save the people. Mm -hmm. So okay. there was really no way, if Jerusalem came under siege, there was no natural water supply inside the walls of the old city. So Hezekiah went out, was it to Gihon Springs? Mm -hmm. and. Uh, had men digging from Gihon Springs this way and then he had other workers inside the city digging this way and they called to each other so that as they were digging they could hear the voices so that they could somehow oh. eventually meet in the middle and that gave the city of Jerusalem a water yeah. supply that came into the city that the water supply outside the city so if the city came under siege the city inhabitants wow. could still get water so this was a very very important military move yeah um and exactly what the people liked to see in their king doing something brilliant to help save them um, and the where hezekiah's tunnel ends inside the city is a very significant place it's the Pool of Siloam, okay. which if you are familiar with the New Testament, it's where Jesus, when he healed the blind man, mm -hmm. he said, go wash in the pools of sure. Siloam. And that's the blind man wow. then got to see. And um, it, it's a very significant story. So we filmed inside the city of Jerusalem at the Pools of Siloam, but then you can also, we walked back into Hezekiah's places tunnel. of yeah. Hezekiah's Tunnel. That's neat. Which is really insane because it was an active dig site. So when you watch this week, you'll actually get to see some of these clips, but one of the things we got to do was walk in and we found out back there, they actually found uh, beads that are pomegranate like seeds mm -hmm. and then some other things like a gold uh, beadlet which would have been the exact beads that would have been used by the priests as they were walking back and forth oh, wow. literally using that tunnel to bring water into uh, the temple and to go to the temple yeah yeah because the walkway you know goes right up all the way up to the wow. temple for sacrifice. and so it, it was really i mean it is a very fascinating place but here's the lesson that um I really appreciated yeah. about King Hezekiah. So there's part of his life where it, it becomes apparent that his uh, medical condition has deteriorated to the point where he could die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he asked the Lord to please spare him. And, um, and the Lord does, the Lord gives him more years to live. And you would think after experiencing such a miraculous intervention by the Lord, that your heart would be so eager to give God the credit mm -hmm. and so eager to, with everything you have, honor God and really, really pay attention to how your influence is used to yeah. honor God. But we actually see the exact opposite in Hezekiah. Okay. He gets this miraculous intervention from the Lord to spare his life. Mm -hmm. And then we see the very opposite of what we would hope to see. Instead of giving credit to God, he takes credit for himself. Okay. And uh, there's a story right behind the healing of Hezekiah where some visitors come from Babylon and uh, Hezekiah takes them into 
the palace and the storehouses of wealth for <laughs> Israel and right. shows the Babylonian leaders all the treasure and it's it's like hezekiah's like look at you know like if it were today like look at my crib you know <laughs> yes, yes. Look, look at my storehouses of gold and and look at all this expensive jewelry so let me ask you today kendra if you knew that somebody was interested yeah. in invading you and stealing from you would you open up your home and show them all the places where you've where, placed mm. your jewelry, your um, items of precious worth, and uh, w- would you give them your access to your bank account? Mm. Uh, would Social you do security all number. Of that? Right. You know. I would not. Okay, I would like good to think I wouldn't. Yes, answer. Thank you so good much. Good answer. But I think Hezekiah was so enamored huh. with taking credit for himself look at all this that I've amassed Mm -hmm. as king, look at all this that I have access to. And he was more interested in impressing them, the Babylonian visitors, than in protecting his country and protecting his people. And Joel, why is this really important? I mean, he would have known these visitors from Babylon, he, he would have known something about them. Like he would have known that yeah, Babylon is a what? Superpower. I yeah, mean, it's a and it's a superpower. known threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a known threat to Israel. They've deposed the Egyptian, you know, uh, nation. Uh, they've, I mean, literally he's watching as they're taking over all the people around oh. them. Uh, and so this is number one public enemy threat to his people. And I think it's also an indication that we'll find that maybe we've got enough money to pay these dudes off. Mm-hmm. And so you'll start to see okay. a little bit of an idea of, huh, we've got all these riches. I think I might be able to trust this to get me out of any potential circumstance. And we'll find out how that goes for him. Yeah, and I think it's uh, a telling reality of how important it is to recognize God's activity in our life and give Mm -hmm. God credit, not Mm -hmm. take credit for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think it's important um, that we're going to see not to trust in our wealth and be very careful about how we talk about what God has given us and always recognizing it comes from God, not because of our own strategy, our own successes, our own ability to amass um, any kind of wealth. I think it's also telling um, in Hezekiah's heart that he's more concerned with impressing somebody today than protecting his people for the long term. And then one of the most disturbing things that we're going to see about Hezekiah is he is then told what you have done is not good. (laughs) Oh, wow. And um, so the prophet comes and says, what you've done is not good. And... um, the next generations are going to suffer because Mm. of what you've done today. And Hezekiah's response is so shocking. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, well, what you say is good. Because if I'm not going to suffer from it today, then that's okay. Whatever happens to the next generation, it is what it is. And I mean, he's told like, your sons will be taken captive and become eunuch servants in, you know, the the enemy uh, kings, and um, it's just so telling Hmm. how he allowed his heart to get to such a bad place, but we find out that this is all happening after he experienced this miracle from God. So, you know, I wouldn't say necessarily that it's my favorite lesson, um, (laughs) but I would say it's a very telling lesson yeah. because I think we all assume that times of distrust only happen mm-hmm. when hard times come, yeah, when good. fearful times come, when things aren't going your way. But for Hezekiah, things were absolutely going his way. Yeah. Hmm. And it was that very fact that got him into a place of taking too much credit for himself and making decisions that ultimately were devastating not only to Hezekiah's family, but to the people and the nation of Israel. Yeah, that's so good. I think for me, the thing that uh, really is important is also an awareness that God never leaves his kings by themselves. There's never this like, figure it out for yourself. And Uh you had mentioned, Lisa, a prophet. So we will find that there's this prophet named Isaiah. (laughs) 
yeah. who's hanging out with King Hezekiah and actually is a prophet is just the mouthpiece of God giving a very declarative statement of this is what's going to happen and to warn him. And that is evidence of God's kindness and God's mercy and just saying, I don't want you to go into this type of hardship. And it just makes me consider, huh, am I heeding what God has given us today, which is his word? Uh, and am I really thinking about the way that God is directing us and mm -hmm. listening to the spirit inside of me that's confirmed by God's word? Because God has not left us alone today. Mm. Um, we can actually trust God yeah. tangibly because of what is in his word. So I think this week as you listen to the video, and I think it's really good to have all of this in mind, yeah. even though it's a little bit of a spoiler alert for <laughs> the video. But I think um, keep this in mind in this week's lesson. You'll get to see the tunnels, you'll get to see the pools of Siloam, you'll get to really understand King Hezekiah's story because we read it line by line in scripture. Mm. And I think the good question to ask ourselves is, where have I experienced God's faithfulness? Yeah. Where has my life suddenly, it's like this thing I prayed for, God did answer my prayer. Mm. And where are those places maybe that I get so comfortable because yeah. life is the way that I expect it to be, oh, that good. maybe that comfor comfortable place, that answered prayer, that miraculous intervention from God, um, could that possibly be leading me to a place where I'm taking credit for myself mm. and not really recognizing this is all from the Lord. Wow. Mm. And Joel, you mentioned the word and how you can get into the word and help you discern the Holy Spirit and know what God is trying to tell us and direct us. Mm -hmm. And so like we have said before, it's something that we hold true here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. And so we started with you, Joel, last time with yeah. the tagline. So we're gonna start with me now, okay? So when, I, when we know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. everything. All right, everybody have a great week four and we'll be back next week. <laughs>